great to see you. Nice to be here with you, Kate. Appreciate it. I know that you've got a have had a deep interest in space and uh, that's worked its way into your art in a variety of ways. And I wondered if you could start out by talking a little about your interest in space, where that came from, uh, what it is. I feel like uh, the idea of being on a singular planet, a singular living planet, uh, the first time we were kind of collectively made aware of that was from a photograph from space. Uh, you know, when we saw the earth from space for the first time, uh, like a huge wave of environmentalism took flight in, on our planet. And, and, and I think that obviously like the vision of a living earth is old and from many cultures before we had the picture from space. But I think in each of those cultures, every, every kind of uh, origin story that we have um, ties to this relationship to the cosmos, to cosmic beings, to to this kind of um, um, huge vantage point. And so that's always been a starting point for me, um, thinking about being a part of that um, um, co connectivity, um, that connected ecosystem. Um, and so that sort of spurned, uh, brought on this interest for me in thinking about ourselves as traveling in that way. And then thinking about the earth as a spaceship, um, you know, I was informed by Buckminster Fuller, other other thinkers, other philosophers who who talked about spaceship Earth, and then I happened to get the chance to live in Houston uh, for for um, many years. Uh, to I helped uh, start and run an arts and medicine program at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston um, in pediatrics, and so. I was simultaneously like spending a lot of time making art with children who were uh, cl clinically, you know, critically ill, terminally ill, um, and immersed in kind of space culture, space research, space history. Um, and those, those threads in my life interwove and overlapped in, in, in many ways. Um, and that led to my current body of work that I'm doing now. You know, I, I'm really intrigued with a lot of the work you've done, uh, particularly with spacesuits yeah. and the idea of um, a covering that can help uh, with resilience and protectiveness in a difficult environment. Yeah. Uh, this is probably a, a year in which we, uh, 2020 has been a year in which we have all paid a little bit more conscious attention to that than we might have in the past. and. Um, can you talk a little bit about that concept of resilience and where that plays out in your work? I'm using the term earth suit. It's like, what, what's, what can we do? What can we learn from? I, I've got to work in making spacesuits and helping design spacesuits when I was in Houston and through this uh, pro past projects. And so I really got intrigued by how those technologies could be leveraged to, to, to create a more sort of better response to environmental get, mitigation than clothing something maybe different from clothing and housing, some kind of third space um, or different from clothing, housing and vehicles, like some sort of middle, something that intersects those things. You know, I'm intrigued by uh, the process of taking it from the idea to the reality, but, but I'm also really intrigued by the idea because there's a lot of space where, um, for example, to keep it within the realm of painting, to keep, to make artwork around these ideas versus making the thing itself, I, I'm not even sure what the ultimate like um, version of this earth suit is. Like it, there's, there's so many levels and so many technologies that you can sort of pull off the shelf and combine, but, but the question is to what end and, and what takes priority, so. Let me ask you about the, the concept of the earth suit. Yeah. You, you've done work designing spacesuits um, yeah. from an artistic perspective, but they have also actually been worn by a couple of astronauts at the space station. Yeah. And now you're thinking about this concept of Earth suit uh, that you're representing in your work yeah. uh, and also open to the idea that this could be created as a, as a resource. For me, um, uh, what, what, what are the basic things that we need for survival and, and how do we... Um, make survival more enjoyable and more more um, uh, practical for, for more people. Um, and and so when I think about designing uh, the Earth suits, 
um, in a way it's in contrast to my interest in the space program. You know, I'm interested in space, I'm interested in research and I'm interested in space travel. Those things, I, I find myself continually inspired by that area, but I also am constantly plagued by the question that many people are when they think of space. They say like, well, what are we investing in space for if there's so many people on earth who still don't have the basic necessities? And of course, the answer to that is all of the things that we learn from, from investing in space have impact on the betterment of life on earth. That's the kind of the, the protocol for space research. But uh, so in that thinking about spacesuits, I'm thinking, well, certainly the spacesuit isn't gonna benefit people on earth. It's gonna, but, but what we've learned from designing spacesuits is how to create a really functional and incredible self-contained environment. And, mm -hmm. and that can survive in a really, you know, radical, uh, difficult, uh, life-threatening context and, and that can keep you safe and relatively comfortable in these really extreme situations. And as I'm watching the Earth's uh, trajectory get more and more extreme, uh, it seems that we need to start to prepare for greater and greater worst case scenarios. When you think about that, when you think about, you know, climate change and, and the fact that we do have certain environments on the planet that are starting to get more extreme. Yeah. What are some of the use cases that you envision? Living in Houston, the, the really pressing for me at the time, and it, it's still obviously around the world really pressing is, is climate control. Um, mm -hmm. Like thinking about the body's response to, to temperature and how important that is for health and, and how, what a great risk that is and how um, environmentally and um, expensive climate control is, how, um, and how, uh, how it's sort of limited who has access to it. And the more people who have access to it, the kind of the worse the environmental situation gets. So for example, uh, there's many other examples we can talk about, but let's just stick with this one, is, is, which is this idea of climate control, climate mitigation for the individual versus having to heat and cool a whole building you know, to be able to have that with you in an effective way with spacesuits, that's a part of the deal. I mean, you're, 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 you know, when you're on the space station and you're doing a spacewalk, you're uh, orbiting the earth uh, at once every 90 minutes. So that's, you're in 45 minutes of total darkness and freezing cold, and then 45 minutes of real heat exposure as you're in the side of the sun. And so they have to make that adjustable temperature for the spacesuit. And, so thinking about that as a really simple thing that, but even within spacesuit design, there's still like calls at NASA to say, we have to improve the climate control situation for the spacesuit. So there's still a lot of innovation to have the, the main, the, the function, the, the climate control situation in spacesuits now hasn't changed that much from the first spacesuit. So there's room for improvement there. Can you, can you talk about a couple of the pieces that you've got in the show? Yeah, so I'm going to just talk about a couple of them. The, the first one I'm going to talk about, since we're in California, I'm going to talk about California Earth Suit. That, that ends up being one of my favorites. Um, and I, I, I painted that one um, like the first day I could get outside after the big fires and like the air was not so smoky that I could be outside. Mostly I do these paintings outside. Mostly my studio is outside and I'm taking old paintings that I have made and collected and cut apart and rework and to make these kind of collage style fabric collage style paintings. Um, and so the, to me, the California earth suit was really timely. It was like one of those things where I didn't, obviously I started working on this stuff before COVID hit and I started working on this stuff before I lived in California, but I, I lived in, in Houston and gone through hurricanes. I've, you know, obviously, you know, thinking about this stuff, but when living with COVID and the fires at the same time, and I went out to take the dogs for a walk and I was like, you know what, even in like the apocalypse, you still have to take the dogs out. You know, I was like, so the, the idea of what, how do we, how do we continue to thrive in these really um, tumultuous times uh, is a big part of the aesthetic, but the idea also of the patchworking, like I really want to think about things that like, I don't have to keep going back to the, like a third party vendor for like, if I'm the manufacturer, I don't want people to have to keep coming back to me for it or for the whole thing. I'm, I'm really interested in those types of circular economies that people are starting to in, in invest more and investigate more. How, how do we, how do we have 
materials that we put out and reclaim and reuse? How do, how do we manage our production and the life cycle of our, our, what we make in a way that is, is, is A, beautiful and interesting and B, really um, smart environmentally and, and kind of in best practice. So this idea of collage and patchwork, I, I was really inspired. I've been really inspired for years by um, simple kind of Japanese farmer clothing, like old school Japanese boro fabrics, like this kind of patchwork fabric or quilting. Um, the Gies Bend quilters from Alabama have been a big influence for me. Um, this idea of, you know, rebuilding things out of old work clothes, uh, you know, and, and that kind of the preciousness of things that age over time. I feel like when we have to buy things new all the time, we lose that sense of like passing fibers down and like cherishing things and holding them. And like the older they get, the more beautiful they get. And as I'm getting older, I'm hoping that aesthetic catches on, but, but, um, but this idea of, cherishing things and being able to re-layer them and rework them is a part of all these paintings. And, and California Earthsuit is, is about that too. It's kind of this patchwork of technologies. You know, that passing on of, of pieces of things that have been lived in, have been used, have been loved, yeah. uh, also as a way of, of uh, creating or enhancing the connections between people, between generations in yeah. a family, whatever it might be in a neighborhood yeah. um, or in a, in a guild, you know, between um, artisans uh, and one another. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the farmer earth suit? So, so that's a great, I, that's, I really appreciate you asking about that one in particular, because I think that that, when you talk, you mentioned guilds and like this idea of like different suits for different trades in a way, like, of course, like the passing down the kind of like of traditional things. Like I think like skills, um, kind of tools, tools. Yeah. These things like the way that those are shared intergenerationally is really important for me as a father, as a member of the community, like to be able to like, kind of to have that. But then also to who, who gets to benefit from these things and who, what are the greater benefits? So the farmer earth suit was um, basically based on like, okay, who has a heavy exposure to heat, who has heavy exposure to environmental toxins, who has, who has to live an itinerant migrant life, like bam, bam, bam. Those boxes are checked by people working in, um, you know, farming and agricultural and harvesting industries. And so um, I've, often thought like, okay, it's more fun for me to think about designing something for farmers who are going to need it than for like the space tourist. Like I, I appreciate space tourism. I'm psyched for that industry to evolve and I'm sure it will be fascinating, but like, this is a, where I'm like, it's more, it's more, I mean, I feel get more out of it for me thinking about my end user as the person whose life it's going to save, you know, like versus mm -hmm the person who's just going to think it's cool. Like there's a, like a slight difference and hopefully it will apply to both. Like hopefully it will apply to people who just think it's cool, but hopefully it will save lives. I mean, that's the, the plan. Yeah. Well, I, I love the concept of earth suit and I, and I love the idea that, um, you know, that it's a coming together of materials and uh, coming together of different needs uh, uh, that it's, you know, that it's oriented towards uh, serving particular needs that people have. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like in the colors and the, and the textures of your work, there's a, a, a sort of optimistic energy that comes out of them, even though some of the colors are, are, are kind of dark. Yeah. Um, but there's a sense of, of life that comes out of them. I really like that. I appreciate that. I really do. I, I, um, I think I gained a lot of um, that kind of joyfulness actually from working with children in like pediatric oncology, like a kids, like when I, when I would bring art supplies to work with people, I, I, I knew like I could be super into moody, dark stuff or, you know, but it was, it was the rare kid that would gravitate towards those colors. So I found like, well, I had to have stuff in my kit that was like good for all ages in a way. And, and so, but I do have, you know, dark, heavy days too. So, but to think about in the face of these things, I like think, I think optimism in, and, and um, kind of joyfulness are really um, powerful stances to maintain. And they seem to work for bringing about 
health and wellness to some degree. Uh, it's not like you can just say, well, like put a good face on and it'll all be okay. But, right. but those, those forces are meaningful. And, and I try and convey that in some way in my work. So I appreciate you noticing that. Thanks. Well, Ian, thank you so much for joining us to talk about your work a little bit. Um, yeah. We really look forward to uh, getting people in to see the show and uh, virtually for the moment. Yeah. And uh, wish you luck with the rest of your Excellent. endeavors. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, it was nice to talk with you, Kate. Appreciate it.